Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Justice Minister believes slain Hanover bus conductor was targeted. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck has theorized that the bus conductor, who was shot in the head by a passenger in Hanover on Friday night, was targeted. Chuck offered his theory while speaking at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Lucy, which forms part of what was supposed to be a five-day stop in the parish, where the Justice Minister planned to promote its alternative dispute resolution initiative. The killing of 40-year-old Clifton Hart took place on a section of the highway across from the service station in Hopewell. The motive for the killing was not immediately clear, however, Chuck told congregants at the church service that the conductor was targeted possibly due to an early disagreement. The truth of the matter is that he was targeted, but obviously, it is emerging from some disagreement he may have had with the offender Chuck shared. And we have this right across Jamaica, where people are in conflict and they are failing to use appropriate means in order to resolve their conflicts. They feel that they must behave like the Almighty and take life. They never gave life. Who gave them the authority to take a life, he added. I am saying we, the right-thinking members of the society, must put in place the appropriate mechanism for people to resolve their conflicts. And that is what the Ministry of Justice is determined to undertake so that everyone will have the opportunity to get justice services and to be able to resolve their problems peacefully, the minister said. Reports from the Hanover police are that about 8.10 p.m., the bus, which was loaded with passenger, was en route from Lucy into the part of Montego Bay in St. James, when upon reaching Hopewell, someone in the bus asked for a stop. It is understood that before the driver was able to comply, the gunman reported they approached the door, drew the weapon and shot hard, who was standing on the step inside of the bus. Who was of the Belvim address in the parish and was called referred to as Young Man was reported the shot in the head by the gunman, who later escaped on foot. We, the knee-high flood water that residents of New Haven in St. Andrew are accustomed to, was absent Sunday afternoon as tropical storm Ian drifted further away from Jamaica. The roads were flooded throughout the community that suffered back-to-back -back large scale flooding as a result of tropical storms Eta and Zeta in 2020. Residents said, this time round, they were able to breathe a sigh of relief. It could have been worse was a common discourse among people. Sylvia Sutherland sat on her veranda on Riverside Drive and looked at the watermarks on her wall, a stark reminder of the previous years. Last year I was affected very badly. Everything got wet up and spoiled up. The water was so high that it covered the bed and mashed up my mattress. The whole yard was full of water. It was very bad, she told reporters. I'm grateful that we didn't get the storm. I am very glad. If we got the storm, it would be worse. The whole place and all the houses would be flooded out, Sullivan submits. The Meteorological Service initially said Tropical Storm Ion could produce 100 to 200 millimeters of rainfall, mainly over eastern and southern parishes, which it was projected to pass close to the island on Saturday night and Sunday. But by Saturday afternoon, the Met Service stated that the weather conditions associated with the tropical storm were no longer a threat to Jamaica, as the system had drifted a bit south outside the projected range of tropical storm force winds. Another resident, Ryan Kelly, said he was happy and relieved Saturday afternoon after hearing the update. I am very grateful that we didn't get the storm because normally the whole place would be underwater, he said, standing in a puddle a short distance from his home on Riverside Drive. From Riverside Drive, go all the way round back, the road would be flooded. Water would probably be at car level. We are grateful, but we still need proper roads and drainage, and the gully still won't clean, Kelly continued. Brandon, a delivery man in the community, agreed. He told reporters that the work is needed to prevent major flooding in the event that an aggressive weather system directly impacts the island. We worry about if it is worse than before or not, from it flood, it flood. So once we don't get rid of the flooding, it can't get any better, he argued. You have to get rid of the flooding and find out how to get drainage system and these things. And that will create employment for others around here and not working and who want extra money. Meanwhile, not so happy with Rahim Edwards, who lived on Duane Terrace, and was peeved by sewage water that overflowed into his house. We have sewage water coming up on the veranda, and when the smell rises, we can't even sleep. We have to lift up the manhole on the road for the water runoff, the 21-year-old related. When we're walking at this, you know, we have to wash off with bleach and fabulosos. We can't do all of this all the while. On Friday, June 14, Mayor of Kingston Centre Councillor Delroy Williams while speaking to the Senate, said the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation has been increasing its allocation to road maintenance, preservation and redevelopment. 
Williams said the KSAMC was able to respond to the flooding issue in New Haven caused by Duane River because of its management of its special grant for repairs, SGR emergency funds. Further, Williams noted that the KSAMC had also set aside funds to continue further work in the Duane River ahead of the upcoming hurricane season. Trelawney Municipality clamps down in public safety breaches. The Trelawney Municipality, with assistance from fire and public health officials, has increased its efforts at public safety and are now on a drive throughout the town of Falmouth to identify breaches by businesses and have them rectified. Mayor of Falmouth, C. Jonah Gajo, and a team made up of senior staff members of the municipality, along with the fire and public health personnel, are on a drive throughout the town to identify business breaches. He told reporters that a team made up of senior staff at the municipality have observed inconsistencies while touring this space. We have observed several breaches. There are some buildings being built contrary to the plan submitted, a very popular one in the operation of an establishment without adherence to the International Fire Safety Act, Gage outline. The Act states that all businesses which serve the public must have separate entrances and clearing mark exits. No person must walk more than 75 feet to find a water hose in case of fire. Gage and his team observe that in some establishments, especially in supermarkets, there is some adherence to the code because the exits are marked. However, he noted that there are cases in which glaring breaches exist. The exits are sometimes marked with a sign, but operated as a storage area for goods and garbage, Gage stated. As a consequence, the mayor disclosed that the municipality will do what is necessary to have the regulation adhered to, as he informed that operators were one of the breaches and given time to make the corrective steps or face court action. We took one operator to court recently and won the case Gage shared. We hold no grudges, and once regulations are followed, the operator will be able to resume business. One fire officer, who chose not to be named, explained that the business owners are required to fulfill certain requirements when filing an application to have their premises passed, but make alterations after they have acquired a license. These operators adhere to the requirements when they were inspected, the fire department officer explained. Once they are certified, they do their own thing and block out the exits. Given the situation, the officer has issued a call for members of the public to assist the fire department. If breaches are observed, members of the public can take pictures and lodge a report, the officer said. This will be highly appreciated because we do not have enough staff. Parents grateful for DNG Foundation's education support. As parents and students settle in a rhythm, readjusting to in-person classes, more than 70 families are praising DNG Foundation, which donated more than $650,000 in book vouchers and other support for students, most of whom live in communities in and around Spanish Town Road, St. Andrew. Fifty families from Riverton Meadows, Riverton City, Shanti, Colorado Meadows, and surrounding communities benefited from the Foundation's donation of vouchers for students in the area. The students attend schools across Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. Catherine, among them, Convent of Mercy Academy Alpha, Jose Marti High School, St. Andrew's Technical High, and St. Diego High School. One recipient was Christina Lawrence, a mother of three from Britain Meadows. Her eldest daughter, Wahili Robinson, just started grade 7 at Alpha, her dream school. I recently purchased books and supplies for my daughter and was shocked when I saw the price. At least one of the books was over $5,000. I had no idea how expensive high school books were. I found out about the voucher from the DNG Foundation from one of my neighbors who encouraged me to reach out for support and I'm glad I did. The voucher did not cover all my costs, but it made a difference and I'm thankful for that, said Lawrence. Reflecting on the challenges faced by parents across the country and in particular vulnerable communities, DNG Foundation accountant Dennis Beckford shared, Costs are incredibly high and many people are not earning as they did before the pandemic. This makes it hard to provide everything children need for school. The Foundation recognizes education as an essential pillar of national development. Therefore, we focus heavily on initiatives and activities to support education at various levels. Riverton, its environment, are a prime example of many of our communities full of promise but in need of interventions to help youth realize their full potential. We know we cannot meet the needs of everyone but we hope to make a lasting impact on as many as possible. Riverton City resident Maya McLaren's daughter, Martina Parks, is a student athlete who just started her high school journey at St. Jago High. Although Martina resides with her grandmother in St. Catherine, 
Ma Ha was able to access support from the DNG Foundation to help prepare Martino for the transition to the secondary level. Martina was accepted into St. Catherine High School, but St. Jill offered her a place at this school because of her performance as an athlete. We were also proud of her when she came and said, Mommy, I got into Jago, and I quickly started to buy her textbook and supplies. Honestly though, it was rough because the books were expensive. The voucher helped me because I also have a younger son in basic school and have to pay for his schooling. She doesn't live with me, but I talk to her daily and she loves her new school. As part of its outreach in communities, the foundation has also provided $160,000 as cash support to the children of more than 20 employees at the Red Strap operated Windsor Farm in St. Catherine, where the company cultivates cassava. Please remember to subscribe, like,